Ghana is going through difficult times in terms of job creation. Now, many youth are desperate for jobs that are non-existent. Others are being laid off. Now, the challenges seem unending. Perhaps this has incited a sense of creativity in Ghanaians in their quest for a daily bread. Now, Abigail Admarquintry tells the story of Ebenezer Sechi Ansan, who has refused to stay unemployed and using creative means to sell his kokoyam. Man who will do anything to fend for himself in times of crisis best suits Ebenezer Sechiansa. To make ends meet, Ebenezer would rather set himself apart from the many men who will despise hawking kukuyam under the scorching sun. What you would not miss about him is his unique dressing for the job, one he says attracts more customers. Sometimes if I dress wretched, you know, go fast. Unless I dress neat like that before the kukuyam will go. There are other artisanal jobs like carpentry, uh, like, uh, you know, working in a garage. Something that usually men would want to do, but to sell kukuyam, why? Uh, Sometimes uh, the people, uh, uh, I swear that dirty job is not uh, a necessary uh, work. But if you, we try and we try to do it, we encourage the people that they, they outside, they, they uh, other places, they like stealing and uh, robbing, uh, they, they will uh, learn more about it or they will uh, try to do hard work. At night, Ebenezer is a security man for an MTN office in Accra. What he earns is not enough, so he treks through the city during the day, selling kokoyam at eight cities per five pieces, hoping to make 30 cities profit daily. Sometimes I go like uh, from Accra to La Paz, Accra to other places, Carnation, Odoko, Choco, a lot of places, yeah, to sell it. So it's very difficult, but small time, go, go to make it. Not only is Ebenezer working to earn a living, but wants to be a source of inspiration to the youth. I was doing this to encourage people to do more. They can do more about uh, the way I'm doing. Like they are going robbing and other things, it will not help, they help them. Maybe you will go, uh, uh, you, sh you show your life in Isawam or other places. But how about those who are shy? Guys like First, I'm shy. But after I'm doing it, it's much more no, better. Live there and there. Ebenezer Sechiansa is not yet married, but says he's saving towards giving his future family a comfortable life. He hopes to expand his business and export farm produce to neighboring countries in the near future. Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News. Well, government plans on using $65 per barrel as Ghana's benchmark price for crude. Finance Minister Setepe announced this at a stakeholder meeting on the state of the economy. We are not likely to see crude oil prices, you know, below $50. And those are, so we are monitoring. And this also goes for the issue of hedging and others which has been in the news. What price do you use? We started looking, monitoring. At the time it was... 45 when we were doing the revision, the IMF estimated that it would, the stable price would be about 53, you know, dollars, which is what we use per barrel. I believe when the economic outlook with the fund produces periodically comes out, you know, and I believe it will come out pretty soon, I don't think the fund will be sticking to 53. The fund will be sticking to something higher. So we are in a period of, you know, volatility, and we continue monitoring the effect on the budget. And that is why it is difficult. You know, I think at the time we used 53, Bank of Ghana put out actually the BOP effect. I remember I was on the panel with the governor and he showed the BOP effect, which showed that that is positive. And we showed the fiscal effect, which is negative. You know, which is why we had to revise the budget. So if you have to do it, then you have to do it progressively. So we may do it now that we know that price is hovering around 65. We may use 65. We won't monitor, we may put out one of the effects using another range. But it's difficult in a period of volatility to say that this is the amount of savings. I said Tekpe will partly attribute governments growing debt stock to the depreciating city. Um, the main impact is that because we generate 
we predominantly see this and government collects taxes in cities. If you take external loans, government also has to get the cities to pay, you know, for, you know, the loans. So when a city depreciates, it means that you need more cities. And that is why there's an explanation that sometimes the increase in the debt that we see is an account of this depreciation alone. I think I had a figure of about seven billion. And therefore, government itself has an interest in making sure, you know, that this cost of debt service, which is one of the reasons you saw the interest line, you know, moving up, you know, is so government, contrary to, you know, has an interest in stability of the dollar. If we approve the capital budget in particular, you know, for Ministry of Roads, and contractors have to import equipment. If I use an exchange rate of 2.1, okay, not a, exactly, uh, for, to do the budget, and it moves up to 2.5, I need more cities, you know, for the same dollar, you know, item. So there's, there are, these are some of the ways in which, you know, the depreciation of the city, you know, actually affects, you know, uh, government, you know, budget. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Kofi Wampa, has expressed hope that the IMF program will help stabilize the Ghana city. Speaking at a conference organized by the Finance Ministry at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Center, Dr. Wampa said, effects of the declining CD on operations of the bank cannot be overemphasized. Supply-wise, we've had the external shocks that the minister talked about for the past two to three years, where we have lost, in terms of revenue, over $3 billion uh, during that period. If you look at the prices we were getting and the production at that time, until now, we've lost over $3 billion. If you compare this to our total reserves of uh, five point, just over $5 billion, we see that's a sizable amount. So that's a lot of supply not coming to the market. In addition to that, demand has been quite high. The issues about supply is mainly external because we don't determine that. Then there are domestic uh, factors which the minister uh, said uh, or talked about as um, uh, imbalances, fiscal imbalances and so on in 20. 2012, 2013, and to a lesser, a lesser extent, 2014. This resulted in the twin deficits. So demand was high and supply was falling. So we had that problem. So as part of the program to uh, go back to the uh, stability path, we, we went for the fund program. Again, let me say it's a fund program, not bail out, as some people would like to uh, say, say it or call it. We went for the farm program. One of the main issues is front-loading the fiscal, that is fiscal consolidation. That is one, that, for me, that is the, pro, the main advantage and the support that it gives. But the amount that comes from the fund may not be that much, but it, both the technical assistance, the uh, efforts that we put in terms of consolidation, and then the uh, coming on board of the development partners. These all together would, is what we see as the advantages of the program. Because when you talk about the amount that came in, it, it was 100 million, uh, 100 million dollars, uh, a little over 100 million dollars. Yes, it, it helped, but I don't think that that is what we rely on. We have other tools like monetary policy, which is quite tight now. You notice we increased the policy rates uh, again uh, last month, and it's, it's to make it a bit more tighter. But we would even have gone for a tighter uh, stance, but for the fiscal consolidation, which is all already gaining traction. Uh, we, both our figures and what they a minister should indicated that the fiscal was on track, on, on track in the first quarter. So those policies will start gaining um, some credibility when people see that happening over a period. And that is why maybe the, the stability is slow to return, because there is still speculation there. When they see, uh, they, due to seasonal 
factors. The city started depreciating slightly in the first month, that is January. We, we, we saw that in February and March it picked up significantly. Part of it is speculative because last year the same thing happened. Those who wanted to procure forest for payments started bring for, bringing forward their payments and so on. And unfortunately, some of the exporters also were taking and are still taking advantage of the market to uh, quote outrageous uh, rates. I uh, mean, mainly exporters in the mining and uh, uh, both oil and gold mining sectors. And we we think that. All these are speculative factors which would reduce significantly if we get um, the uh, people to believe that the uh, stabilization uh, is on track. Well, of course, there are other external factors like the, uh, what other economies are doing. For example, the anticipated hike in uh, price uh, in rates by the Fed in later in the third quarter or fourth quarter. It's also being looked at as reasons why we, we, the flows that we normally have for, from external investors are not really coming as they should. But I believe that with the stabilization on track, we will get back to stability quite soon.